Hello and welcome to another Blender tutorial. I'm Daniel Bentink and today we are going to be continuing with some more sci-fi stuff. We are actually going to be making planetary rings completely out of volumetrics. Alright, let's get right into it. If we just go into render view, you'll see that I have a simple scene set up just with a light, a sun lamp and our planet. Uh, we'll just be going over the rings, we've just got the planet here so that we can see what our rings look like around the planet. Alright, so I'll split my window off and go to the shader editor. And if we just go back into solid view, I'll add in a cube. Uh, we want to add, uh, just put our cursor, which is over here at the moment, and put it in the center of the scene, which it starts off by default. So first of all, I'll just select my planet and press Shift S, uh, cursor to selected. There we go. Now it's where our planet is. Uh, but it's all right for you. If you're just starting in a scene, it'll be in the middle by default. Okay. So... Let's actually add in a cube, scale it up, uh, something like that, something large, because it's going to be basically the volume of where our, our rings are going to be. So that looks about right. All right, and we'll add a new material. That's in the material tab just here. Uh, we've got our shader now. So we've gone into the shader editor here, and we'll just remove our principal shader. Shift A to add in a shader. We'll add in a volume scatter node. All right, plug that into the volume socket and then uh, we'll go into render view and we'll see our, our volume working. Now we'll just set up some settings in the render settings. So we're using Eevee at the moment. We'll go to shadows, make sure everything's high detail, so set things to 2k, high bit depth and soft shadows enabled and then we'll also go to volumetrics, set it to 2 pixels, that way we've got the highest possible resolution and we can go something like 128 samples and then volumetric shadows on up to 128 samples and we'll do the same for our render 128 all right that way we've got high quality volumetrics there we go so i'll just plug in a texture so we'll get a texture gradient texture there we go i want this to be in uh, the density so I'll plug that there and we'll also get a color ramp so that we can tweak it pop that in and then I'll just, with Control T, add in my mapping and texture coordinate node. It's the hotkey if you've got node Wrangler add-on enabled. Uh, we'll set our coordinate to object instead. There we go. And we'll set our gradient texture from linear to quadratic sphere. All right, and now you can see we've got a sphere, which is great. The other thing we want to do is cut off the top and bottom of this sphere so that it becomes just a flat disk. And I'm going to do that with another sphere gradient. So duplicate this, and then uh, duplicate the mapping node, plug in the object to the vector again, and then plug our vector to the vector of our texture. And then we'll do a converter math, put it in front, and then set it to multiply. And we'll multiply our new texture in. There we go. So if we turn up the Z uh, scale, we'll see that it actually flattens our sphere. And I'm actually going to adjust the scale of my top one because I think it's a bit small. So let's turn it to something like 0.5. And I'll turn up the strength as well. So let's duplicate this multiply, put it in front, and we can adjust the strength. There we go. Go to our side view. Yeah, and we can see our disk inside there. I'll actually scale up my cube. There we go. Now our rings are a bit bigger. All right, so let's just flatten this a little more. So I'll turn up my scale here and we'll turn up the density quite a bit. And you can see that we've got this flat disc and there it is, there are our rings. So, and you can just adjust this as much as you want. There we go, something like that. But of course it does take, when it's quite thin, you can see you've got a lot of banding and that's going to be worse the lower your samples are. So you will need quite a few samples to make this look good. Um, but keep in mind, if you do use cycles, then that won't be a problem. Now we want to actually add the bands of our rings. And that's going to be done with our color ramp here. So first of all, we want to find the edge of our sphere, which is yet the outside. So we'll leave that there. Then we've got the white point. We'll pull that in and we'll get another point and put it on the end and we want this to be black and this will help us cut out the middle of our rings and there we go. 
So now we've got these nice rings and then we can actually add in other points. So you can add as many points in as you like. Uh, and this will just help us basically create the different uh, levels of detail on our rings. So I'll actually just turn up my uh, samples a little bit. All right, okay, now we've got a thinner image. It does take a bit to generate, so it's not gonna be instantaneous. All right, and you're gonna need a lot of points to get more detail into your rings. So let's just continue working on this. All right, and we have some rings. Now we've got the values of the rings plugged into our density. If we just grab this color ramp and then plug it into the color, we can get a second color ramp, put it in between, and we can set colors for our rings. And this is gonna take all the values from our first color ramp. So let's maybe make it sort of an earthy color, make the other one maybe a bit darker or yellowy. And then you can see it affecting it there. And you can affect this however you like. We've got some paler rings and some more reddish rings. Add more colors or change the colors. But yeah, that's a simple setup that you can have. And these rings have volumetrics, which is really cool. Like you can go into it and then it's, you know, you sort of get this obstruction, which looks really cool. It's very cinematic. Uh, you can have, you could add a particle effect system if you want to like put asteroids throughout it and then the uh, volumetric axes like the the mist of all the asteroids and yeah there's some cool things you can do with it it also works in cycles so we'll just switch over to the cycles engine it does take a while to render especially in cycles because volumetrics is very expensive and uh, very noisy to render so you will need high render samples but yeah, if uh, you want to render volumetrics, it's pretty cool to use this effect for your rings. And yeah, just a, a little over 100 samples, you're getting an idea of what it looks like in cycles. So yeah, it's pretty cool, but yeah, a bit noisy, it takes a while to render. But it's uh, a pretty interesting effect. I will just switch back to Eevee. But yeah, that's just a simple setup that you can have. And this doesn't have to be your main rings, like if you don't want it to actually be the uh, little rings of your planet you could sort of just have it as a uh, supporting feature like say you've got a particle system already with asteroids throughout uh, you could just use your uh, volumetric rings as sort of just a supporting uh, volumetric fog effect so like if we turn the density down we can see if we just turn off our overlay yeah it's got this very interesting look you can sort of have your camera inside the volume that's uh, very interesting uh, yeah, it still looks very cool when you turn it up and you get the very obvious look of the rings. And then, of course, you got the shadow of the planet. Let me just turn up the resolution. Actually, actually, turning off soft shadows will probably work better in this instance. There we go. And I'll just quickly go over how to actually add this effect to just a flat plane in case you're not interested in using volumetrics. All right. So we'll just quickly add in, if we turn on our overlay, we'll hide this cube and we'll add in a circle. All right, scale it up. We'll go into edit mode with everything selected, just E to extrude and then scale it down. And this will be our rings. And there we go. So we'll just, uh, with control two, we'll just add in a subsurf division. That way it smooths it out. And that modifier is just in this tab here. There it is. 
and uh, we can actually add in our material. So let's go to the material tab and let's actually find, what did I call this? Uh, all right, so there's an easy way to do this. Uh, let me just make my cube visible again. And we'll select uh, our ring first, which is selected. And then we'll shift select our cube. And then if we can press control L, we can give uh, our ring the same material as our cube. So just click materials, there we go. So we'll hide our cube again, and we'll see that our ring now has our material. All right, so uh, instead of plugging it into the volumetrics, we'll instead use a different shader. We'll go with the principled shader, and we'll plug our color in, and then we'll plug, uh, instead of, because we don't have a density socket, uh, we'll instead use the alpha. Uh, let's plug that in here. There we go, the alpha socket, and we'll plug this into the surface, and we no longer need that volume. There we go. So now we're just using a surface shader. All right, but since we're using Eevee to make uh, the alpha or transparency channel work, we need to change the blending mode in the settings here from opaque to alpha blend. That's just in the material tab. All right, so uh, we'll go to render mode again. And you can see that that same texture is uh, pretty much unchanged. It's just casting it on a flat surface now instead of through a volume and it looks great. It renders much cleaner, much quicker. So yeah, you can do that on a on a 2D space or through a volume, which is really cool. You just don't get that mist effect when it's 2D. All right, now I've just changed the angle of the lighting and I've quickly set up a camera. So if we press numpad zero, there we go, that's my camera. And now I've actually got just one last effect I wanna add in. I don't think there's actually quite enough uh, bands in my rings. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly add in a, another texture. We want a noise texture. And we're going to stick this just in front of our main gradient. And now when we stick that in, it's going to put noise through all of our bands and create more bands. So we can see just by adjusting the scale, we can have as many bands as we like. And we get this very uh, varied and very high density look, which is very interesting. Uh, we can also affect the detail, which is cool. Uh, turning that up is a really cool effect. And then maybe just the roughness, turn it down a little bit. And yeah, you get these big dark areas, big light areas. And it goes really well to add the noise onto the gradient, just for more detail and more variation. So yeah, that's the end of this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. It's just a fun little trick for making rings, whether you want to use a flat surface or volumetrics. Um, yeah, it's just a really cool effect. All right, bye guys.